Amy wants to be the life of the pool party. You cannot use the swim fish cream. I haven't even tested it on humans. Now, she and her friend are in deep trouble. What's happening? Oh, nasty! Is her social life all washed up? Fish lips. Are oh, you chicken of the sea? If the mutation went on too long, then they'd be fish forever. Coming up next... I'm having a bad fin day. On Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, the TV show. to Honey, I Shrunk the Theme Month on Channel KRT again. Jesus Christ, this was a dark fucking episode. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Randy Martin, and I forgot I wasn't watching Hill Street Blues for a hot minute. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Kate Quinn, and Chuck, Chuck, it's Marv, your cousin, Marv Fishland. <laughs> <laughs> you know that new human trafficking scheme you're looking for? Well, listen to this. <laughs> the screams of fish girls. I'm helping. <laughs> I'm Tyler Green, and Jesus Christ. <laughs> At least it didn't have any fucking mimes this time. Thank God. <laughs> How is that a pro? And welcome back to the show, Gabby Tyrell. <laughs> Honey, I think I traumatized the kids. <laughs> <laughs> this episode desperately lacks silly whim. That's all I'm going to say. Right? She would probably solve everything in this episode. All we would need is like, I don't know, some magic cloth. Not even magic cloth. We would just need mermaid magic cloth. I, I gotta be honest. I don't think silly whim would really help here. I think she and those kids would stop by. They'd all sing a song like oh we're being human traffic we're being human traffic <laughs> and then they'd leave <laughs> i don't know are there any songs about that that aren't copyrighted the more we human traffic human traffic <laughs> human traffic the more we human traffic i'm done with this bit you know with the fact that there's mermaids in this episode as well as a bunch of people in crab outfits do you think dr vile was behind this episode undoubtedly yes it all comes back to Dr. Vile and we sing on this podcast. So this episode was basically Disney's 1989 movies ripping off each other because it's Honey, I Shrunk the Kids meets The Little Mermaid. Meets Splash meets My Trauma. Meets QAnon. <laughs> I mean, Splash and Honey, I Shrunk the Kids... Both had SCTV alumni, so it tracks. This episode, look, I know at this point saying that this show is weird is saying the sky is blue, but... We did not expect it to take the route it took. <laughs> Alright, so today we're talking about Season 2, Episode 2, Honey, She's Like a Fish Out of Water. Wayne creates a skin lotion to make people become great swimmers like fish in the water. Amy takes some of it to a pool party that she's invited to. When she uses the lotion, she becomes the life of the pool party, so the girl who the party is being held for tries it as well. However, things go terribly wrong, as usual, when the girls find the lotion has turned them into mermaids. They'll end up completely turning into fish unless Wayne can create an antidote. However, things get even worse when the desperate and greedy owner of the pool kidnaps the girls to use them as a money-making attraction. Wow, that's a lot of words. Yeah. Right. <laughs> that's a whole mouthful right there. So out of curiosity, Gabby, what's your history with the Honey, I Shrunk the Kids series? So I never watched the actual movies. Like, all I've seen of the movies is just, like, the commercials that would be on, like, the VHS tapes and stuff. And they were all very traumatizing. All I've seen is the show at Disneyland, Honey, I Shrunk the Audience, and a couple episodes of this show, including the one that we were watching. And I have noticed that all... All of the Honey, I Shrunk the Kids series from the movies to the theme park show to this television series, they all have a common thread of just wanting to scare the shit out of children in the most unique <laughs> ways as possible. Yeah. And just giving any sort of kid any sort of like sensory help. They're just putting 
kids through sensory hell and just like ah trauma. Basically, the late '90s for Disney Channel was just let's see if we can traumatize people because we had this so weird. We had all the Disney Channel Halloween movies. How many kids can we traumatize today? And now we have Gravity Falls and Amphibia. So. <laughs> It's a classic case of those who don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it, but it's the good kind. Yeah. Speaking of Disney movies that traumatized us as children, I have a question for everybody out there who knows anything about Disney Channel original movies. I saw a bit of this, like, one Disney Channel movie when I was a kid where it's like, I think it's this girl, like, trying to help her parents because they're, like, trapped in a stone wall or something, and their faces are, like, embedded in the rocks, screaming for help. Jesus! What? It was horrifying, and it affected me deeply, and someone please tell me what that movie was called so I can face my trauma. That kind of sounds like Halloween Town 2 a little bit, except it's a dude's face in a stone rock. It might be... Oof. That sounds familiar, though. I, I feel like it was someone's parents... And and they were screaming for help, too. It wasn't like, you know, hey, I'm a rock. (laughs) Honey, we trapped ourselves in a rock wall again. This wasn't like, oh, gosh, diddly darn it. I'm embedded in a rock like a normal decon would be. They were begging for help. They were screaming in agony. Meanwhile, Disney Channel's is all, well, the Owl House just doesn't fit our brand now. It's like, really? Look at all the shit you were making in the 90s. (laughs) You had a Hannah Montana episode where Miley's evil redneck cousin basically tries to kill her. (laughs) You also had the fucking Even Stevens episode where Christy Carlson Romano is taking everyone's eyes and turning it into milk. What? (laughs) The That's So Raven episode where they transformed into cows, which we actually did an episode about, by the way. Check that out. That also traumatized me. That was great. (laughs) This episode had to be somebody's fetish as well, didn't it? Undoubtedly. But the Owl House doesn't fit our brand. Your brand was Gravity Falls at one point. (laughs) (laughs) Another thing about this episode we should mention, John Polito plays the villain in it. We somehow forgot to mention in the first episode we did that John Polito was on this show. Holy shit. Yeah, so it just turns straight up into a Coen Brothers movie. So should we get into the episode? Absolutely. Let's go. So with the way that this episode started off, I legit thought I was watching an episode of Power Rangers at first. (laughs) Right? (laughs) Like, literally everything about this fucking scene had the Saban charm to it. The fucking high school set, the stereotypical nerds, the fucking slapstick. I was expecting Bulk and Skull to just come around the corner with the uh, music. (laughs) <laughs> Side note, I fucking love how Power Rangers, literally, the way they produced it, was just saved by the bell meets stock Godzilla footage. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And it took so fucking off. It really did. Also, I love that while she's bitching about Veronica, basically she's like, I'm smart, I'm popular, and her goth friend is like, and modest. That was a good line read. I will say, the daughter Amy, I didn't really like her in this episode. She was just like, "Uh, she's the popular girl is just so rude and all that. And yeah, the popular girl is like really rude, but like her solution to this is like, I'm gonna upstage the popular girl at her own birthday party and then everybody's gonna love me. No, that's not how that works. Yeah. You try to upstage somebody at their own birthday party, um, people are going to be mad at you. And it's not just her. It's going to be like everybody else is going to be mad at you, you know? (laughs) It's the mother-in-law mindset. Like, I know. If I wear white to my son's wedding, everyone will think I'm so hilarious and love me for it and hate her. (laughs) Right? I'm not even gonna lie. The way that Amy and Veronica were talking to each other, I was like, this is slightly homoerotic. I was just gonna say, I was picking up on some um, lesbian vibes there. I was like, hey, you girls gonna kiss or something? It's the 90s. Just do it. (laughs) (laughs) When she trips and causes the huge food explosion, I half expected to see Peter saving MJ from the lunch tray in the background. (laughs) (laughs) Also, they keep making jokes about how school food is terrible. 
because like the goth friend is like, you just did the unthinkable, Amy. You ate an entire school cheeseburger. I mean, I'm not going to act like school foods are like the fucking peak of cuisine, but they weren't that bad, were they? I lived for Bosco sticks. There were some that were good, but like our school pizzas, especially in elementary school, were pretty terrible. High school, I just usually brought my lunch anyway, but like... Sounds like you guys never been to (laughs) high school. You've never been to (laughs) high school where they joked about how the sugar on all the breakfast items was cocaine. (laughs) Oh my god. (laughs) So Gabby, as you were mentioning, Amy comes off as kind of unlikable in this episode. Oh yeah. There seems to be a specific genre of Honey, I Shrunk the Kids episodes that I like to call the Amy fucks around and finds out episode. (laughs) (laughs) Because there are several episodes where Amy specifically fucks with one of Wayne's inventions and learns a lesson out of it. Like, for example, one of the episodes that was on the uh, viewer's choice poll was the dream episode where- I think I voted for that one. It's a good episode. I'm really mad it lost, honestly. But Wayne basically creates a dream machine to help Nick with something and get over a fear in school and everything. But then Amy comes in and she messes with Nick and it gets the attention of a dream god who threatens to kill the Zelenskys in their sleep, basically. A dream god? Yeah. Yeah. Like an actual god? Basically, yeah. So Amy literally puts her entire family in danger just so she can fuck with her brother. I mean, granted, she learns her lesson at the end, but what the hell? Yeah. Yeah. Also, I will admit that as much as Amy could be kind of a bitch in this episode, Wayne's priorities and how to be mad at her are all fucking over the place. Like, yeah, he's mad at her for stealing the cream, but he's surprisingly chill about, I don't know, about the fact that she's turning into a fish it's weird okay so we're jumping ahead and i know that these situations aren't exactly as comparable to each other but how the fuck is Wayne harder on amy for turning herself into a mermaid than nick sneaking into his school and resurrecting a bunny and putting a fucking demon into it yeah and making an animatronic to pretend he's sleeping. Boys will be boys, but when a girl fucks up, you are worse than Hitler and Satan and Genghis Khan combined. Yeah, Yeah. I mean, both of them were sneaking around and stuff, and to be fair, Dad kind of leaves shit out in the open. Like, he doesn't even have a password on his computer to get into stuff. It's like, it's just out there. It was the 90s. It's basically the mentality that made Hillary lose. Yeah, so jumping ahead again, but when Amy and Veronica, the girl, are rolling around in the car without proper protection, they don't have any seatbelts on. They just stick them in the trunk and call it a day. (laughs) Amy starts complaining that she's flopping around, and Wayne's basically like, Sorry, honey, you deserve this for turning yourself into a mermaid. Made. Jesus Christ. Are you still gonna say that if you crash the car and then she flies through the fucking windshield, you motherfucker? Good God. <laughs> and also, this town is still built on shit talking the Zelenskys, but barely doing anything about it because this woman that Diane is talking to to try to set up a new program is just dead set against her. Oh my God, right? Yeah, Mrs. Gana, Mrs. Gatorama Ding, or whatever her name is. When I first heard her name, I thought I heard Mrs. God is ramming. Dings. <laughs> <laughs> At first, I thought I heard Mrs. Gonorrhea ding. <laughs> So Wayne is just Doctor Strange because he can just open the multiverse whenever he wants. I I literally made a note in one of those saying, oh, I love No Way Home. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, for context, when Mrs. Gautarama Ding wants to come into the house, Wayne says that Quark bit the fucking time hop record. So now there's like a fucking medieval brawl in the living room. It's like Celts versus the Roman. Yeah. And the Celts are kicking the Romans' butt. Fuck yeah. Scotland! That's gotta be a baseball joke or something. (laughs) It's probably a soccer joke. Or a football joke, as they call it across the pond. Well, I mean, it is also definitely a history joke, because the Romans and the Celts were uh, pretty big enemies, but unfortunately, the Romans kinda were the butt kickers in the end. Yeah. Yeah. Also, Nick apparently steals his mom's lingerie catalogs. This aired on the Disney (laughs) Channel. Oh, boys and their mom's lingerie catalogs. I kind of love the irony in that joke, considering that Thomas Decker, who plays Nick, 
is actually openly gay. Oh, nice. Which, speaking of, we're recording this on his birthday, so. Happy hey, birthday! Happy birthday! <laughs> the joke in this TV product has been Michael Eisner approved. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think every Disney thing that came out from 1984 to 2005 that had even one dirty joke in it should have that come after the joke. <laughs> Michael Eisner approved. Huzzah. And don't forget that there's the fact that Wayne is somehow enough of a renowned scientist to create inventions for a cruise line. Yeah, I guess somehow people are like, yeah, sure, he's almost destroyed time itself a couple of times, but... He could give us the ability to swim. What year did the Disney Cruise launch? Hang on. That was like the late 90s. I want to say like 98. And when did this episode air? This aired 98. Gee, I wonder what cruise he was making that for. (laughs) (laughs) But anyway, going back to Mrs. Um, God is ramming dings. um, I I don't know how else to pronounce her name. So I'm just going to put how I heard it. Mrs. God is ramming dings. Mrs. Bitty Booty. Yeah, Mrs. Bitty Booty. (laughs) (laughs) Mrs. Rizzledy, Rosaldy, Hey, Bambassity, Nickety, Nackety. <laughs> going back to Sillyville. I can't believe I remember most of that shit. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, going back to her, she's just like, oh yeah, you know, you got this program and it's going to help, you know, kids down the line, but your family is just too goddamn weird. So I'm not going to fund it just because of your family. It's like, lady, your priorities are shit. Your shit. What the fuck is wrong with you? I can guarantee she has, like, oh, I don't know what she's doing, approving contracts or whatever. I can guarantee she's working with people who have been on the Epstein flights. Undoubtedly. <laughs> I'm gonna deny you because of your slightly weird family. Hello, person who's been on Epstein's plane multiple times. <laughs> sure. Aww. I'll give you a bunch of money or whatever it is they do. And she probably overfunds the police department as well. That track. She probably does. I mean, Chief McKenna gets a lot to do in this episode, so... Okay, so who plays Chief McKenna? Because he he looks really, really, really familiar. George Buza. Voice of Beast in X-Men. Yeah, he was Beast in the X-Men cartoon. Oh, really? Yeah, he was. Oh, sick. Also, Nick is so damn smart, but for some reason he decides to keep his guinea pig, which for some reason the Wikipedia refers to as a hamster, in that tiny ass cage. Yeah, this guinea pig that we've never seen on the show up until this point. Why didn't they just have Quark turn into the half fish? We also get the immortal line. Hey, get your guinea pig out of my cream. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. That's what she said. <laughs> wow. I hope I never hear that ever again in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> also, when Alvin the guinea pig is swimming, Alvin is a good boy, by the way. He mm-hmm. is. When Alvin the guinea pig is swimming, Diane and Nick say that he's doing a backstroke. That wasn't a fucking backstroke. It was literally just him, like, moving his paws around, and I don't even know if that was safe for the guinea pig to do. That was probably CGI. Yeah, I hope so, because guinea pigs cannot swim. We have a lot to say about the CGI in this. Oh, God. Let's put that on the record. (laughs) Nick is abusing animals. He killed that rabbit, and now he's probably going to kill that guinea pig. (laughs) Wait, so they call a guinea pig a hamster in the description. Also, his name is Alvin, who happens to be a chipmunk, which a prairie dog was called in the famous viral video, Dramatic Chipmunk. It's all connected, man! (laughs) Also, when he's transforming into the fish, the sounds he makes are just fucking horrifying. Good God! He sounds like he's legitimately suffering. No more guinea pigs for the Zelensky family. You are all blacklisted from adopting rodents of any kinds. You literally can't even keep them in a cage. Like, you're 10 years old and you're all super geniuses for the most part, but you don't know how to keep a guinea pig in a goddamn cage for it to not like you know go around and chew shit it's like you guys aren't that responsible are you also no more lagomorphs for them it is very clear that anyone in the Zelensky family cannot be trusted with any kind of rodent 
or any kind of lagomorph. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which, by the way, lagomorphs are what bunnies are. They're not rodents, it turns out. That fucked with my mind, too. Like, even still, going back to earlier on when Quark bites the time hopper cable, he could have fucking electrocuted himself. So not only is Wayne Zielinski a technical war criminal, he's also a fucking animal neglector. That tracks. Yeah, you know all the sad animals you see in those ASPCA commercials? Those all came from the Zielinski household. <laughs> mm-hmm. We literally established early on that there's an episode where Quark turns into a kaiju. <laughs> we should not be surprised. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Why can't Kipper turn into a kaiju? He's a perfect candidate. So we cut to the villain of the episode, Marv Fishland, played by John Polito, as mentioned earlier. And his place is going bankrupt and he's following behind on businesses. And they couldn't afford to actually shoot at a water park, so it's just <laughs> a pool. <laughs> He's like, oh, why is my water park going out of business? Your water park is literally a pool. My community pools in freaking Arizona looked better than this. This guy is implying that this is like a massive water park aquarium hybrid. Not too unsimilar to, I'm trying to figure out how to say it, Geauga Lake. Did I say it right? So this water park consists of a single swimming pool and a bunch of people in really flimsy fish costumes. They look more like shrimp. Yeah, so no wonder this place is tanking. But um, shh. <laughs> I mean, maybe that was intentional. I don't know. Although I will say John Polito is easily the best part of this episode. Him and Peter Scolari are both giving... 150% in this episode. Oh, no doubt. And also, I fucking love the line from the banker. Just, I don't want you to think that the banks don't care. But the banks, banks don't, don't care. care. <laughs> <laughs> Capitalism. I feel so bad for laughing at that line, but also... It's a good line, though. I love it. But also, like, John Polito's character kind of deserves it. He's a human trafficker. He's a human trafficker with possible mafia ties. I love it when capitalism satires capitalism and capitalism still doesn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so let's get to the water park scene where we're supposed to be amazed at Veronica's diving when her attempted at diving is just a small jump on the diving board landing on it, and then falling into the pool. Right? Also, she keeps drawing attention to Amy, then she dares to get upset once Amy starts getting the attention. To be fair, they are high schoolers. Remember when you had to listen to the girl who swore she was going to be the next American Idol sing a cover of a pop song on the bus? It's Trump and Hillary all over. Yeah, high schoolers tend to uh, over-exaggerate their talents a bit. Yep teenagers scare the living shit out of me that's like my anthem every day also kind of off topic but i can't believe this was the exact moment that i realized that wayne and diane who were brunette and blonde respectively were able to have a red-headed daughter Redhead jeans. Maybe one of their parents was a redhead. I don't know. Because my grandma and grandpa, I mean, obviously before they went gray and stuff, to my knowledge, they weren't redheads. And then they had my aunt who was kind of more brunette-ish. And then my aunt got with my uncle who has dark black hair. And my cousin is redhead. She's the only redhead in our family, so it's it's the genes. Yeah, that checks out. Also, I know the bar is very low for CGI on syndicated television, but holy shit. We got the Sims swimming over here. It's not even Sims. It's fucking N64 graphics at best. (laughs) Like, low frame rate, pixelated mermaids doing backflips. I mean, at this point, they're not mermaids yet. They're just very talented swimmers doing incredibly weird things. Don't forget that MS Paint spray tool splashes. (laughs) (laughs) And the fact that at one point, she swims through the bottom of the pool. (laughs) (laughs) Like, some of the low-budget CGI is what makes this show so charming, but in this episode, it just, it looks like absolute shit. I'm sorry. (laughs) It really took me out of it for a second. Like, at least with the first episode we talked about, the shitty CGI kind of made it funnier. Well, I mean, this made it funny, too. Also, Alvin is basically the Fiji mermaid from Gravity Falls, so... So Nick takes Alvin down when he's in the middle of the transformation, and they're talking with Mrs. Ooh-ee, ooh-ah-ah, ting-tang, walla-walla, bing-bang. 
<laughs> and we get this whole scene where they rudely shut her out when they could just easily say, hey, we're having a family emergency. Can we please reschedule? Well, yeah, and that and like the dad didn't even have to be there for that presentation. This is all mom's doing because mom is trying to propose the idea. Lane's just sitting there, I guess, for moral support but then we get an actually funny bit where he slams the door on her opens the door back up he's like oh i forgot and then he throws the cookies at her (laughs) also the half guinea pig half fish alvin what the hell it was giving me h2o vibes how was that a better effect than cgi amy clear clear no Um, to any Australians who listen to this podcast, we apologize greatly. I'm yeah, so sorry. I love your country. I love <laughs> Australia. I'm so sorry. I don't love the jellyfish. This whole episode is just the Sabrina the Teenage Fish sketch from the Weird Al show. This is just like a episode of H2O gone wrong for the most part. <laughs> this is like H2O combined with that one specific frame of those two mean girls turning into zebras in Sabrina. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, no. The fish cream. Veronica. <laughs> Amy. Veronica. <laughs> so in the first episode of this month, we specifically made a joke about Wayne Zielinski being responsible for anti-Irish racism. Yet here we are. <laughs> also, that scene where the guy tries to pull up Veronica's hand and pulls off her skin, that was horrifying. Ew, <laughs> the skin looks really, really fake, though. It, it looks like rubber. But again, this is a TV show. It looks like someone literally cut the hand off of a blow-up doll. What's the matter? You've never seen a human shed her skin before? <laughs> It's normal and valid. Yeah, but like right before they begin their hideous transformation, they're swimming in the pool and everybody's just looking in there. I bet there's some kids just in the background going, God damn it, I just wanted to just chill in the pool because pool parties aren't really to show off your swimming talents for the most part. I'd be annoyed. Like, Yeah, I would be super annoyed. These kids are taking up the pool, trying to show each other up. I just want a sword fight with pool noodles, dude. I'm not here to watch you guys show each other up. <laughs> I'm just here to play Marco Polo and belly flop until I get pancreatitis. Go take your enemies to lovers arc over there. (laughs) Over there, I am going to be creating tsunamis with a boogie board, if you don't mind me. (laughs) And then while this is going on, it cuts to the family arguing in the car, and they automatically ask why Nick didn't stop her, which, yeah, why didn't he stop her? Because he's 10 years old and he doesn't know any better, even though he's a super genius. I don't freaking know blackmail i guess they don't even set it up that he's gonna blackmail her he just goes back to bed and minds his business so maybe he figures that the fish cream just doesn't work period that it's just you know cream made out of fish or something also they lock all the kids into the trunk oh that's another thing too in the middle of the car chase between wayne and fishman wayne somehow knows how to control traffic lights now i love fast and furious supercharged What would happen if Wayne used his stoplight machine on a train signal and made the train signal, like, not go off? (laughs) And and, and the train is still coming? Then you would have a certainly big trolley problem right there. (laughs) But anyway, kind of going back to when the girls are getting, like, their tails and stuff, and they're like, ah, they're going through something traumatic. And the little brother, he comes in, he's like awesome i love his reaction he sees his sister and his sister's enemy possibly i don't know friend or something they're going through something traumatic where their bodies are like literally morphing into something gross and disgusting he's like oh yeah that's awesome that's so cool <laughs> yeah when fishman confronts diane he mentions that people would love to see mermaid cat fighting basically <laughs> And then there's a callback to that where Amy and Veronica get into a fucking cat fight where they start flinging fish insults at each other. And then Nick's like, hey, you know, maybe people would love to watch this. They're high schoolers. (laughs) (laughs) At best, at least Nick is getting some amusement out of this. At worst, 
It's your sister, dude. Jesus. God. They're fucking high schoolers, too, and this guy is like mermaid cat fights. Calm down before you end up creating the guy game. Also, they know that Marv guy is after them, so why do they put them in an outside jacuzzi instead of, like, their bathtubs or something? Probably because the bathtubs are too small. Maybe. I don't know. But they could have just, like, put, like, a hot tub in there. It's just this family has a lot of intelligence but not a lot of wisdom points, if you catch my drift. Exactly. Also, I love that even Quark gets something to do in this. It's like the Zelensky family is really good at thinking, just not critically. Yeah. So Quark is enough to scare off Marv, I guess. But he's still a good boy. Yeah, he's a very good boy. I'm glad they're justifying that end credit in the opening credits, you know? Hey, if Kipper can scare people, any dog can. Yay. Yeah. Right, Kipper? <laughs> But I don't know. I'm still thinking about Marv Fishman and him being just like, oh, I need an attraction for my dying pool thing. Oh, look, a freak show. Okay, P.T. Barnum, I see you. Let's chill out there, though. (laughs) So somehow having mermaids in his glorified swimming pool is enough to save his business? Even if they weren't actual mermaids, I'm sure there would be some skeptics saying, no, but those are fake mermaids. I'm confused. Which episode of AHS season four is this? If he's got enough money, then maybe he could have gotten like some Vegas mermaids or something. I don't know. By the way, American Horror Story Freak Show is good. You guys are just mean. Exactly. Thank you, Randy. And so is Coven. Also, when Marv eventually does kidnap the girls, he leaves a fucking towel behind. I love it because he just throws the towel over the dog and then is just like, hey, girls, like the, that's enough to stop it. And then they pick up the towel and like they, they had enough time to duct tape the dog together. When Tony and I were watching that, he said, oh, God, it's Harvey Weinstein. Oh, no! Oh, no! <laughs> Tony! Gee, I wonder if we'll get his opinion on Honey, I Shrunk the Kids anytime soon. Wink, wink. Also, I love that when Nick discovers that the girls are missing, he's carrying a breakfast tray with him, and instead of doing the dropping it on the ground when he's shock trope, he doesn't even bother. He just fucking flips the tray and yeets it on the ground. (laughs) (laughs) And that was still a better flip than what Veronica did earlier on. Oh, by the way, you're telling me you can subdue a dog just by throwing a towel over it? Yep. Well, why didn't anyone tell me that when I have to deal with Kipper's tantrums? Well, now you just gotta throw a towel over Kipper. There you go. It's actually so funny, but um, Kipper gets very aggressive when he has something he knows he's not supposed to have, like a piece of plastic. And my solution is literally just putting a blanket over him so he can't bite me (laughs) while I take it. There you go. (laughs) Also, they get like eight people total for the mermaid show, yet somehow he's like, that's enough for me to go to Spain. Maybe he was charging them like a hundred bucks, which is probably way too much looking at these things. Because I mean, like I know they're supposed to be real mermaids and stuff, but they still look very fakey and costumey and all that. It's just like... (laughs) It looks like Party City stuff at best. I'm in Spain without the A. You're in spin? Wait, I'm spinning like (laughs) Like a ballerina. Wee! Also, Veronica starts talking about how being popular actually really sucks and her dad is ignoring her. And outside of the fact that her dad is ignoring her, don't get me wrong, that's bad. I was just like, ah, yes, the rich white girl has all the problems in the world. Why is the popular girl trying? always like she's really mean and has family problems when just about like every popular girl in my school was pretty nice and had a stable family life (laughs) exactly there was a thing earlier where you know veronica and amy are in the hot tub and stuff and i'm like huh where are Veronica's parents? And then you know, my question was answered. I have it in my notes. Like, um, I take that back. <laughs> <laughs> also, also, I love that one kid who gets scared by Amy when she makes a bad face at him. And the way he delivers this line is just so bad. It's good. Mommy, the bad fish girl made a face at me. Like, what do you expect? These girls were kidnapped against their own will. And now they're going to be trafficked across the world. What, what do you expect them to be all nice and smiling? <laughs> All right, which producer's kid was this? I mean, I'm not saying that they should have jumped out of the tank and started mauling everyone, but... I wouldn't have blamed them. <laughs> hey, SeaWorld whales, 
I got an idea for you. Shamu's revenge. Shamu's revenge. revenge. But yeah, sea world tanks are more dignified than what they were put in, you know? <laughs> like, Jesus. No, actually, Joe Exotic's place was more dignified than whatever they were put in. Oh, God. Oh. So none of the current whales at SeaWorld are named Shamu. It's just basically a default stage name for all of them. There was a whale named Shamu in like the 70s at SeaWorld, at one of the first SeaWorlds, who was extremely aggressive in a very cramped tank. And they say she died naturally, but there's speculation that she was poisoned because she was too aggressive. That tracks. Yeah. Instead of like, you know, maybe a proper memorial for her, they honor her by calling all of their whales Shamu while offering, like, no context as to where the name came from. So yeah, fuck SeaWorld. Yeah. Agreed. Also, Wayne basically is trying to comfort Diane and remind her that whatever Mrs. Ooh, ee, ooh, ah, ah was saying doesn't matter, and it was a sweet moment, but I was also half expecting him to say, honey, you've helped me cover so many war crimes. You're the best. <laughs> <laughs> honey, let's go shrink the audience. <laughs> Honey, let's go shrink that bitch. Aw, Michelle and Barack are so cute together. (laughs) (laughs) We just went for the fucking throat. (laughs) And Donald and Melania. Ooh, that was a spicy one. (laughs) No, Mamma Mia, that's a spicy meatball. (laughs) And so then we cut back to the park, and then they're put back into the trunk, like, we're gonna go to Spain, girls. And I was like, he's on the Epstein flight logs, isn't he? But I will say, like, going back to the parents when the girls are first kidnapped and they find out, like, who could have taken them? Well, I don't know. Maybe it was the creep that was chasing you guys home. Come on, Zelensky. I thought y'all were geniuses here. He literally tried to break into your house and coerce your wife, so... Once again, the Zelenskys are good at thinking, just not critically. And they dress in those stupid costumes and one of the kids actually gets mad at Wayne when he isn't dancing. Dance for me, shrimpy. <laughs> So, like, at first, I saw the trope of, like, anytime someone's in a mascot suit, a bunch of kids go, like, do the, like, whatever dance for us. And I was like, that's a bit ridiculous. What has that happened in real life? Until I realized it's actually adults who are trying to be influencers on TikTok and Instagram who go up to the Disney World characters and and say shit like, can you sing the Armadillos Keep Digging song from TikTok? (laughs) What kind of pizza do you like? Tinkerbell, like, come on. Every time someone yells Andy's coming at a Toy Story character, Woody should get at least one free pass to kick them in the nuts. Ugh, (laughs) the the people who kept bugging Squidward at Universal to dab. The trope is wrong because it's not kids who do that to costume characters. It's grown adults who do that. Yeah, I mean, if they wanted to be more realistic, they would have had, like, TikTok influencers coming in like, Oh, hey, shrimpy shrimp, can you do the shrimptastic shrimp dance for me? And then (laughs) um, dab and do the nay-nay and the whip. And, And I'm sounding very elderly now, so. I'm just gonna stop. Oh my god, Shrimpy, do the caramel dancing with me. It's so funny. <laughs> Armadillos keep digging. Also, I love that the kids are just so excited to see a random dude in a shrimp costume when literally it's not even a mascot outfit. It's just a shrimp hat and body. Sounds like you guys have never been to Canopy Lake Park. On a side note, if those are sea monkeys, Mar Fishland totally sells NFTs of them, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes, he does. I mean, he probably got out of jail on a technicality, so... He probably is selling NFTs to this day, and they look like ugly fish people. They're like the monkey NFTs, but they're actually fish and all that. And he made a cartoon and stuff, and he's like, "Ah, why am I in debt? I don't know, maybe it's your shitty NFT cartoon, dude, you know? (laughs) Meanwhile, the Zelinskis have done this technology to make NFTs actually physical, to like own now there's a bunch of ugly monkey nfts running around <laughs> <laughs> imagine seeing one of those fucking bored ape nfts run at you in real life oh god i would simply pass away and it would be the worst cgi imaginable yeah. <laughs> Also, Diane tells Mrs. G to just fuck off, and I love that. Yeah, good for her for growing a spine. Mrs. God is ramming dings just needed to be told to fuck off at one point, and that was very well deserved. Seeing Mrs. Ramalama Ding Dong get told to shove it, 
That was just icing on the cake. And she has the nerve at the end to say, oh, I'm so sorry your daughter was trafficked. I've changed my mind. It's like, bitch, I don't want your funding. (laughs) Well, no, she wants the funding because she's a rich lady and they get the funding in the end. And that's a good thing that I'm glad she came around to that. But I don't think she's ever going to be coming around to other things anymore. I mean, she does show up in a couple episodes after this, I think. But is she ramming dings in the background? Then. <laughs> uh, uh, sure, why not? Good old Mrs. Rekka, what? Will I have some of that? <laughs> Mrs. Oh, Black Betty, Ramble Lamb. Oh, Black Betty, Ramble Lamb. Mrs. Got it bad, got it bad, got it bad. I'm hot for teacher. Mrs. Eruption Guitar Solo. Mrs. Darth Vader from the planet Vulcan. And it ends with Amy and Veronica briefly implying they might become friends, but they're like, but we have to keep it secret because high school. And I'm like, why? Lesbians. That's why. Lesbians. Now, okay, so when they turn back into themselves, I don't know, maybe I mandela myself into this, but like, I remember when it was like getting worse for them, they just start doing the dolphin noises in the track, like, Ee-! No, you're right, they did. And it was horrifying. But before that, I had a distinct memory of their faces just morphing into dolphin faces. And they didn't do it in this episode. And I'm like, did I Mandela myself to have more trauma about this? Like, damn. I hope that's not real because that'd be horrifying. It's so funny. Um, I was helping my grandpa clean up after dinner while finishing up this episode. And he heard that and he thought there was sirens outside. (laughs) (laughs) Like police and firefighter sirens. He was like, what's that? And I'm like, oh, that's just the weird thing on my phone. (laughs) (laughs) So Amy and Veronica decide to keep their friendship secret, but... I just thought that they didn't decide to become friends, period, because they're like, oh yeah, you're popular, you're not. We were just gonna continue to be bitches to each other. But she didn't want to be popular. There is another episode where she does come back, but also, everybody saw you guys shed your skin. You'd be lucky if anybody would want to associate with you after that. Yeah! Yeah. They got the Men in Black memory wipe thing on them because Wayne Zielinski obviously has connections to the Men in Black and can do that. So everybody at that high school got memory wiped. They have no memory of this ever happening. It's fine. How else have they not been run out of town already? And when John Polito's getting arrested at the end, the police don't believe him that the girls were turning into mermaids. But all those people saw them, so... It was a mass hallucination, and also, men in black pen thing, memory wipe thingamabobber. I mean, I don't know, maybe Chief McKenna really is that stupid. He's a police chief in a sitcom-type environment. He has to be stupid. It's television law. You were beast for God's sake, man. Well, to be fair, Uncle Phil was also Shredder. Oh, well, yeah, it's true. And he was also on an episode of That's So Raven. Yay! Yeah. All right, so do we keep the tapes? Do we put it in the donation box? Or do we burn it badly? Gabby? I'm going to have to say burn it because this caused way too much trauma for me. And I would rather anybody else not go through this. So You have chosen poorly. No, I'm kidding. But. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler. That's it. You're sleeping with the fishes. No. Oh, that's about negative a thousand social credit right there. Please select your execution date. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm going to give it a tepid key, probably closer to the donation box, just because it's probably my least favorite episode of the ones we've done so far. It's kind of a bit long and kind of boring at parts, but John Polito is a lot of fun and Amy and Veronica's chemistry is kind of fun to watch. So sure, why not? I'm going to give it a keep the tapes because mermaid shenanigans. What else is there to say, you know? Creepy mermaid shenanigans. <laughs> I mean, Wayne's behavior towards Amy is kind of pushing it towards a donation box, but yeah, it's still a decent episode. You know, I will say this about mermaid shenanigans since we got H2O involved. I've always found it funny that H2O was about these girls burdened with a horrible secret that could be set off to be exposed at the slightest amount of liquid, and if they do get exposed, they're going to be subjected to the worst possible dissections and testings and everything. And we saw that as fifth graders, and we're like, I want this. I want this life. I'm going to look up H2O mermaid spell on YouTube to make sure <laughs> that happens to me. I want this more than anything. <laughs> 
please, God, make me a mermaid right now. <laughs> like, those girls could have just easily gone to Vegas or something and then just pretended to be those Vegas mermaids or something. I don't know. Yeah, we definitely need to talk about H2O at some point. I know there was one episode where, like, they did get caught and they were literally caged into the Mermaid Island, ready for some horrific government testings. <laughs> and we still saw that and we're like, I want this. By the way, I was going to make a Mean Girls joke at the beginning of this episode with how Amy and Veronica are basically acting like Katie and Regina towards each other. This episode aired on October 3rd. Oh my oh god. My oh my god. shit. It all connects. No fucking... It's October fucking 3rd. I don't think it was a Wednesday, so... Okay, no, it was a Saturday. Oh, okay. Right. On Saturdays, we wear fishtails. On Saturdays, we wear horrible molecular restructuring. <laughs> <laughs> Stop trying to make mermaid trafficking a thing. <laughs> but anyway, I'm gonna keep the tapes at least 300 feet away from me at all times. Huzzah! <laughs> like, I feel like it being Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, the series, makes me not want to burn it, but I don't want it near me. Agreed. So Agreed. I'm getting a restraining order against the tapes. That's as much as it deserves. Uh, for me, it's a good burn, but you know. You know what? Uh, you guys are kind of swaying me here. I can't believe I'm saying this, but the more I think about it, yeah, burn the tapes. <laughs> yes, come to the dark side, Tyler. <laughs> we have mermaid experiments or something. Mermaid experiments. Sorry, Agatha, please don't send us a cease and desist in the form of a crab. I don't think I'm ever gonna forgive myself for giving a burn the tapes to one of I shrunk the kids episode, but yeah, this episode is really creepy when you think about it. Exactly. Yeah, just... And again, Wayne's behavior towards Amy was just really off-putting to say the least. So yeah, burn the tapes. Sorry, Peter Scolari, please don't haunt me. It's fine. He's had better work, I assume. Same with John Polito, rest in peace. Please don't smite us, guys. We love you. I'm pretty sure they're not going to smite you. They're going to be like, oh, cool. I hope you like our other stuff. <laughs> John Polito is probably looking at this like, oh, yeah, I think I did that. I don't remember doing that. <laughs> Burn that, please. That that's creepy. He's going to call CGI Amy and Veronica animated little fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> the dude is gonna come up and say and stay away from my fucking mermaids man <laughs> so thanks so much for joining us again gabby this was fun oh of course this was so much fun i enjoy traumatizing myself with uh old stuff <laughs> you enjoy terrifying dolphin cgi faces yes i do that you mandela affected i enjoy mandela affecting myself into thinking things are more terrifying than they actually are maybe i can watch um it's tough to be a bug one day and be like oh yeah this was not that bad, which will probably be never. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Gabby, do you have anything you want to plug? Well, I've been streaming lately on my YouTube channel. Um, just look up Ghoulish Gabs. You'll probably have like links in the description that I'll give you guys. But yeah, I stream old video games and stuff on my YouTube channel. I recently streamed like a bunch of Barbie games and stuff. And if you ever want um, to suggest anything to me, you can follow me on Twitter at ghoulish underscore gabs, or you can join my discord. I'll have a link to join my discord channel in this description as well for this episode. So yeah, follow me on Twitter, follow me on discord right there and yeah all right you can find me over on the usual mission breakout on twitter and discord a walking pun on instagram you can find me over on various podcasts such as escape from vault disney the emperor's new podcast and podcast without a cool acronym and you can find me i don't know insert water joke here <laughs> <laughs> i guess fresh water salt water because i am totally not in a doc ock simp phase now uh you can find me on on Twitter at Cosmic Rewind, replace the E with the three. Uh, you can also find me on YouTube at the same name, and you can also find me on TikTok as uh, Dale Earnhardt's persona. And you can find me going to Australia and yelling, Clear! <laughs> Wayne Zarlinski. <laughs> Emma! Honey, I shrunk the key. Dad, why is Fluffy on the loose? <laughs> Fluffy? 
No! <laughs> this episode of Bluey is called Oh, I Cunts. <laughs> Christ. All this right. So it's called Fucking Spiders. <laughs> All right. Okay. As always, you can find me on Twitter at TylerFG, Instagram at TylerFG96. You can find the podcast at channel underscore KRT on Twitter, channel KRT podcast on Instagram, all one word. We also have our Discord server and our Facebook group, which you can find in our link tree and our Twitter bio. And if you want to help support us, you can also find us on Patreon, where we have exclusive minisodes, outtakes, and episodes of this very podcast one day early. And of course, thank you so much to Gomer and Chris Rana for pledging to us at the $10 level. Channel KRT, turn into a fish. Woo! Woohoo! The snack that smiles back, goldfish. <laughs>